So this is uh, some work that's actually done by our French office, Francois Solizier, some of you know him, with one of our customers in France, uh, on interconnect verification. So I think Mark, at the beginning of the day for Mentor, um, in, his, in his presentation, talked about the complexity now of interconnects, and it's just gone from a single bus to quite complicated uh, interconnect verification. Uh, on-chip interconnect, which raises a verification challenge and a, a need for a more generic scoreboard. So what you can see there is a number of different protocols um, all attaching to, to the same SOC interconnect. It becomes a challenge how you can actually verify that that interconnect is correctly implemented. Um, and these are the main characteristics. I won't go through them, through them all, but what you can see there is a number of different protocols, a number of different bus, bus widths multiple memory maps, um, it may be a shared one for all masters, or bunched into clusters, or actually memory map per master. Um, there's some cache coherency issues, which you have to verify as well. And then as you get to SOC level, you get more specific features, such as dynamic lead configuration of the address space, uh, error management, security features, and I know um, talk from Jasper this afternoon will focus on some of those security issues and how to verify security issues. Um, also, power management, you get to SOC level, uh, you know, masters and slaves pairing up or going to sleep and then being interrupted. So as you actually move to SOC level, you get a lot more um, system level specific features to verify as well. Uh, at TVS, we always turn those features into a verification plan. So our verification plan includes uh, address map, uh, the sanity of the protocol, um, because although you've got lots of types of buses and protocols attached to the interconnect, you have to verify the protocol of each of those connections, uh, verify those SOC features which I've just talked about, and then you get down to performance analysis, looking at both latency and bandwidth uh, and interconnect integration, and uh, of course use cases, as Will pointed out, if you don't look at the right use cases, you can get silicon that fouls. So you have to do your use cases at the end as well. So, as you can see, there's lots of routes and address maps all the way across the bus, or the interconnect, I mean. Um, I'm going to stop using the word bus because it's not big enough anymore. Um, and also, as you move across the interconnect from one protocol to another protocol, you get translation issues. For example, going from, uh, this is just an example, from AXI transaction uh, onto a 64-bit bus or potentially onto a 32-bit bus. Um, I won't go into the details because uh, I know I can probably smell lunch, so I won't go into the details on that. But obviously what you get is protocol conversion issues as you move across the interconnect from one protocol to another. Um, so what are our requirements? We need a VIP for each protocol, uh, every protocol checkers, and uh, uh, functional coverage monitors as well. Uh, virtual sequences, um, which allow us to generate our traffic across the bus, um, and what we did in our VIP uh, for this interconnect was to enable controlling all masters from one main sequence rather than a sequence for each master, um, which allows us to generate uh, more complex scenarios more easily. Uh, an interconnect scoreboard for end-to-end -end transaction checking. Um, and what we wanted to do is both do that standalone and within the SOC. Um, so I'll just show you the picture because it's easier to see. Um, there's a standalone one where the SOC interconnect is just uh, taken out of the, the um, SOC itself and verified standalone. <clears throat> or you can do it in context by black boxing the, um, the actual components that are connected that interconnect at the SOC level. Uh, so you can actually do a slightly more uh, in-context verification there. Okay, here's the scoreboard requirements. So our scoreboard is able to connect to any bus protocol VIP, end-to-end uh, -end transaction check-in, uh, support for multiple address maps, security and power, cache coherency, uh, security features, DRM, I think is digital rights management, to uh, make sure that you're allowed to use that data you're, you're looking at. And comparison policies, across there as well. So these are the simple scoreboard principles uh, which we're all used to. And when you actually come um, to the actual 
interconnect it looks more like that um, what we're doing is is taking um, transactions from the individual VIPs those protocols turn them into generic transactions which can then go on to generic scoreboard which allows you to do end-to-end -end checking um, when it came to cash coherency as well what we decided to do there oh, bounced in, was to actually um, do specific uh, scoreboards within the overall structure which allowed us to do uh, cash coherency checking within the overall solution I think that's probably enough gives you an idea and stops you uh, getting too hungry as well okay so I think we're um, we're fair to any questions <laughs>